Anaerobic digestion is a process where microorganisms take waste products and break them down for us. We can use many different waste products for this. It can be things like farming waste, sewage sludge, food waste, many, anything that's organic in material. It's estimated that the UK has around 100 million tonnes each year of waste of this kind which needs to be disposed of. What the uh, microorganisms do within our anaerobic digestion is take the organic waste and slowly break it down. They do that in a number of different stages. So firstly, what we need to do is take our waste and put it into some kind of tank. This can be in very small scale or large scale, huge industrial sized tanks. There's four different processes that the microorganisms go through in order to break the waste down. The first of those is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is where microorganisms, particularly bacteria, take the waste and basically take large molecules and start to break them down into smaller ones. So things like proteins, fats, carbohydrates are broken down into simpler products like amino acids, for example, or sugars. That process is mostly done by bacteria. When we come on to the other stages, different microorganisms take over and carry out different parts of the process. So the second stage is called acidogenesis. Acidogenesis is where those simple molecules that were created during hydrolysis are broken down into things like organic acids, thus the name. We then have a different set of microorganisms working on the process of acetogenesis. Now this is where the molecules from the first two processes are converted into products like um, acetate, ammonium and carbon dioxide. The final stage of the process is methanogenesis. Methanogenesis is where microorganisms known as archaea take the products that were created by the bacteria and create methane and carbon dioxide. Anaerobic digestion is useful to us for three different reasons. Firstly, because we can reduce the size, the volume of the waste that we have. So if you think about industrial processes or sewage sludge, for example, we've got really huge volumes of waste which we need to um, dispose of. And what an aerobic digestion can do because of the breakdown of the products is reduce its volume. So when we look at anaerobic digestion, we can reduce that volume maybe to a half or a third of what we originally had. The second reason we might use it is to produce biogas. So the different processes that are happening within the tanks produce methane and carbon dioxide. We can take that biogas and use it to create renewable energy. So we can convert it into electricity, for example, in a completely renewable, environmentally friendly way. The final reason why we might be interested in anaerobic digestion is the digestate, so that final material, once the waste has been broken down and gone through the process, we call that final material digestate. That can be used in some processes, depending what the starting material was, as a useful fertiliser, because it's still rich in nutrients which could be used on land, depending on what we put into the digest in the first place. Anaerobic digestion can be carried out at small or very large scale. So when we think about small scale, we may be looking at individual farms or small industry taking their waste products and generating fertilizer, for example, out of them. However, when we look at the larger scale, what immediately springs to mind are what water companies are doing all around the world and within the UK. So we work with water companies like Northumbrian Water and Yorkshire Water to look at their processes which are already well established. If you think about what a water company has to deal with day to day and over a year, it's huge amounts of sewage sludge essentially. And that sewage sludge poses a few problems to a water company. So firstly, there's loads of it. it its volume is really high. And anaerobic digestion can work to break that material down so that they have less volume to deal with. Secondly, what we've got is something that's really can be quite foul smelling. And again, the process of anaerobic digestion can deal with that waste so that we don't have those issues. We also have something which um, is full of pathogens and what the water companies want to do is reduce the pathogenicity of their starting product. So what anaerobic digestion can do for a water company is take something which is really, really large in volume reduce it down and actually create some useful products as we go through the process. 
when we work with the water companies, the first thing that they're doing in their really huge tanks is heating the waste up so that they can destroy any pathogens within the process. Once the pathogens have gone, the sewage sludge is entered into a digester tank. The digester tank is essentially just a massive tank, but it's kept at some important um, parameters. So the temperature of that tank is important. So it's going to be somewhere between kind of 35 and 55 degrees Celsius, the perfect temperature for the microorganisms that are within that tank to work. Also importantly, the tank is going to have an absence of oxygen. So the microbes that are in our process need to have no oxygen within their environment in order to carry out their processes. What happens within the tanks is the microbes are left to essentially break down and carry out the processes of hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis and methanogenesis. What we have at the end is gas in the forms of methane and carbon dioxide coming out of the top of the digesters and the digestate, that material that's been processed, coming out of the bottom to in, in much less volume. What the water companies are interested in is what they can do with that gas which is generated out of the anaerobic digesters. So if we look at the gas that's there, it can be used to power the water company's industry itself, so they can become carbon neutral by utilising the gas that's there. Or it can be used to actually take that gas and put it into the grid. So Northumbrian Water in particular are looking at how they can take gas from their anaerobic digesters and put that back into the grid so that they can power homes at the end of it. Although anaerobic digestion is a well-established technology that's used a lot uh, at industrial scale, um, the fundamental nuts and bolts of how it works is still not terribly well understood. Um, as has been mentioned, this is a microbiological process, but actually it uses a microbial community rather than individual organisms. And we know that there are thousands of different sorts of microbes in an anaerobic digester. The challenge that we're interested in trying to unravel is what those individuals do, how we can make them behave slightly differently so that we can get better yields or different outcomes from the process, and how reproducible and robust this process is. You know, if we make a change in one anaerobic digester, are the microbes going to behave in a predictable way that means that we can make that same change in a different digester and get the same outcome? So the way that we're trying to understand that is by using DNA sequencing. And this has some challenges all of its own. Um, because this is a microbial community and there's a mixture of organisms, when we extract DNA, we get the DNA from these thousands of different organisms all at the same time. So rather than trying to separate them out, we take what's called a shotgun approach and sequence every, all the DNA that's there. Uh, traditionally, DNA sequencing has used a technology that can only sequence very short pieces of DNA, maybe 200 letters at a time. Um, and that causes all sorts of problems when it comes to reassembling the DNA so that we can make sense of it. You can imagine we basically have a, the world's most complicated jigsaw puzzle with billions of different pieces that all need to be fitted together, most of which look almost exactly the same as each other. So that's been a very big problem for this kind of shotgun approach. Um, recently, there's new technologies available that allow you to sequence longer pieces of DNA. And so that simplifies the problem because all of a sudden our, our pieces go from very advanced thousand piece jigsaw puzzles to very big pieces of, of the jigsaw all at once, um, more like a kiddie jigsaw. And so putting the information back together becomes a lot easier. So the question is, how do we approach understanding anaerobic digestion by using DNA sequencing? We expect that the microbes that are in the digester will change in response to what's going into the digester. So even if you're considering a wastewater system where the feedstocks are relatively stable, uh, things change over time. Um, because people change what's going into the sewage system, you know, in the summer, people are eating more salad. The kind of things that ends up in the sewer uh, are more related to that. In the winter, you know, you're more likely to be eating stews, Christmas dinners. And so the, the composition of what's going into the sewer varies quite dramatically. And the question is how the microbes respond to that. 
We're also very interested in increasing the yield of gas coming out, particularly the methane. And, and the whole process, as far as microbes are concerned, is a, a competition for carbon. Now, carbon can be turned into lots of different things. It can be turned into methane, which is what we're interested in here, because that's the gas that we can use to generate energy. Uh, it can be turned into carbon dioxide, which we're less interested in. And it can also be turned into building blocks so that the microbes can get bigger. And so this sort of fight for carbon is one of the key processes that we're trying to pick apart so that we can try and encourage the microbes to produce more gas and potentially less biomass. Because the anaerobic digestion community is complex and it's not been really engineered, there are potentially lots of organisms there that either aren't needed or are redundant. So for example, if we consider the, the bottom end of this food chain um, that Caroline was talking about earlier, we're interested in the organisms specifically that make methane. These are called methanogens. They're not strictly bacteria. They come from a group of organisms called archaea, and they can produce methane in a number of different ways. So the two major pathways that methanogens use to make methane are hydrogenotrophic, where they use hydrogen and combine that with carbon dioxide to make methane, and acetoclastic, where they take acetic acid and break it down to make methane and carbon dioxide. There are a number of different species of methanogen that can do these different processes. Some of them can only do one of these pathways, some of them can use both pathways, um, and understanding why one organism dominates over another in these circumstances is a challenge that would allow us to increase the yield of methane in the process. So you can think about this again because it's a community um, in the same way uh, as a human community and uh, part of that ecosystem. So the example I always like to use is coffee shops. Um, we're based in York. York has hundreds of different coffee shops and why one particular coffee shop is used over another by an individual is essentially the same sort of problem that we're trying to address here. In those cases, you know, someone might choose a coffee shop because it's convenient to them on the way to work. They might use it because it has a particular sort of coffee. They might use it because um, of the price that they charge or the cakes that they produce. And so all of those kinds of parameters are the things that feed into why one organism might thrive in this complex community over another one. We can follow which of those organisms are thriving by looking at the DNA sequences and trying to understand what the preference of each of those organisms is um, under the circumstances where they're growing. In order to do that, we need to be able to look not just at the DNA, because these organisms could be there but not active, but also at the products that the organisms are producing. So an easy one is methane, but as I've already mentioned, there could be hundreds of different organisms producing that methane. So in order to be able to get a, a better grasp at that, we need to be able to look at other molecules using different techniques. One of the techniques that we've been um, using to understand this is a process called metabolomics, where we can look at all the small molecules, again, in that mixture, and see how those levels vary over time and try and correlate that with how the population is responding and try and correlate that as well with the conditions that are being used for the digesters that are being operated. So the long-term goal of this research is to try and understand the microbial community well enough that we can manipulate it and get more interesting products out of the process. We could potentially uh, induce the organisms to make uh, higher value products from this carbon that can be used in other industries such, such as the pharmaceutical industry or the chemicals industry, which means that we can take our waste and turn it into um, renewable processes uh, in a green way that saves money, time and preserves the resources of the planet. <laughs>